And so I bring my guest, Mikhail Klar, who is the founder of Better Bite Ventures and also of Future Food Now newsletter. So happy to have you with me. As I understand the numbers, 65% of the U.S., and I also believe the world, but I think at least I'll go for the U.S., 65% of the U.S. is lactose intolerant. That's going to be much higher among African Americans, and almost 99% in Asian Americans, lactose intolerant. So when Coca-Cola, ultimate cool factor, Coca-Cola goes to Asia bringing milk and bringing sickness and disease, I am amazed to hear that Asians are adopting milk. Help me understand this because it makes them ill. Do I have yeah, that right? It's, it's interesting. I mean, like there's high percentage of lactose intolerance for sure and throughout Asia. Uh, I'm trying to unpack it myself as well and understand sort of the perception as there. I would say like in China, for example, where I spoke with some people recently, uh, their estimate is that about half of people are even aware of their lactose intolerance. Mm -hmm half wouldn't be aware. Um, and then the half that is aware is still don't, is not considering it necessarily a big deal. So like they would still occasionally consume um, dairy products even for pure pleasure, not, not even necessary for nutrition and just accept the fact that it will give them a little bit of a achy stomach or whatever other reaction. It's not a huge reaction in their, in their mind. So that's kind of one side of it. Another side of it is that milk was similar to how it was in the West. Last year's was presented as very nutritious um, yeah. uh, food. And, and you know, this, this perception was built that this is uh, the best way to sort of supplement your, pro supplement your protein and calcium. And that's you know, the same um, perception that you can see in the West, you can see among many Chinese and Asian consumers. Uh, and the consumption is growing throughout the region. So I don't know the Asian legal landscape, but here in the U.S., the campaign milk does a body good. I believe it was the USDA, might have been the FDA, but I believe it was the USDA that was sued for that um, commercial and they had to take it down because indeed milk does not do a body good. And, um, you know, they're, they're encouraging people to eat that, which makes them sick. W will the legal system catch up or what, what kind of, um, what's the cultural zeitgeist for alternative facts? Um, I don't think there's necessarily, it's it's definitely government driven in many places. So, you know, you would have uh, programs that are, I guess, somewhere similar to US where milk is served in, in schools as mm -hmm. sort of extra nutrition, um, not necessarily maybe advertised the way, you know, we know it from, from the West and got milk campaign specifically and checkoff programs and so on. Um, I, I think it's it's a, it's probably hard to see anybody challenging it anytime soon. So that that won't happen. I rather personally believe in solution being driven by technology, by startups mm -hmm. and innovators that are coming up with new solutions. That's what we are trying to do, and people we try to support as well when we invest and you know find just more viable alternatives to produce essentially equally nutritious products, right? That can be still mm -hmm. served in the same environments. Uh, mm -hmm. People still can enjoy it and, and get the, all the nutrition from, but just mm -hmm. derived, not from animals. Mm 